Hey guys, Sean Duff here, and today I've got a quick tip I'm gonna share that I think you guys will like. Working with splines is one of my favorite things to do inside Cinema 4D. I grew up playing with Photoshop, using the pen tool to create paths, so splines just made sense to me. They're great for setting up typography or giving a path for an object to follow, but detailed splines, they can be time consuming to set up. What I mean when I say this is when you import a path into Cinema, let's say you've set up a text spline using Photoshop, it's gonna come in flat. But ultimately what I wanna end up with is this nice interweaving and depth inside the spline. I say this can be time consuming because let's say you've got a spline with 50 or even 100 points, manually placing them can be an extremely tedious task. I've done my fair share of manual spline point placement, so I thought I had to find a way to speed up this process. Say that three times real fast. <laughs> I'm going to share a quick tip for how we can create this nice interweaving and depth inside of our spline without needing to move one point. Woo! <laughs> to demonstrate this technique, I'm going to be using a spline inspired by this single line art piece from this French creative duo called DFT. The work these guys are doing is absolutely crazy. I'll pop a link down below. Go check them out. It's stunning. Also, shout out to Vincent Montel and The Spewman for sharing their band's music video with me where they use one of my tutorials to create these great clips. They really pushed it a bit further and the end result shows for it. Cheers, guys. With that said, let's get into today's tip. All right, guys, let's jump straight into today's quick tip. Now, this is the spline we're gonna be using to demonstrate this technique. And this was inspired by one of DFT's single lineup pieces that you saw at the beginning there. Now, as I spin around this spline in the viewport, you're gonna notice there's no perspective. As I've imported this, it's come in flat. To demonstrate this a bit easier, what I'm gonna do is drop a sweep nerve into my scene, grab a circle spline, make that the child of my sweep, and drop our shoe spline beneath the circle. I'll reduce the radius of my circle to something like three, and you can see straight away, all these lines are intersecting. We're not getting any perspective or depth happening within this spline. So I'll hide my circle spline for a second. And what you would typically do to create depth is moving along the spline, grabbing points and repositioning them so you don't get any intersecting of the geometry as they, as they pass by each other. But even in a case like this, as I hit Control A and select all my points along this spline, you can see the point count in the top left hand corner and we've got 91 points. So to rearrange that amount of points would be a very time consuming task and you may not even particularly be happy with the end result. So I'm gonna show you a real quick way we can manipulate this spline to get some really nice depth. All right, great. We've got our initial spline here and what we need to do is reproduce this spline. And the way we're gonna be doing that is by using the matrix object. So we'll go up to our MoGraph tab and add a matrix into our scene. I'm gonna change my mode to object and then feed that spline into the object field. The first thing I'll do is untick the loop checkbox. And what that's gonna do for us is make sure there's a point at both ends of this spline. We can then change the distribution to something like even. And you can see now as I start to increase the count, these matrices start to, they start to form along our initial spline. I think for now I'm gonna set it to something like 200. So let's come back to our MoGraph tab, make sure we've got that matrix selected and we're gonna add a tracer into our scene. And by having that matrix selected at the start, that matrix will instantly go into our trace link. Now let's make sure we drop our tracer beneath our matrix in our hierarchy. And then I'll come over to my tracer and change my tracing mode to connect all objects. And now when I hide that initial shoelace spline, as well as the matrix, you can see you can see we've now been able to recreate that initial spline using the tracer. Now at the moment, this is looking a little bit rough. Some of these edges are quite sharp, so we're gonna have to smooth out this spline to get a bit closer to what we initially started with. I'm gonna zoom in for a second, and I'm gonna turn back on our initial spline. And what you're gonna see here is what we started with to where we are currently using the tracer. So there's a couple of things we can do to start to smooth this out and get closer to what we started with. First, what I'm gonna do is change my tracer type to a B spline and change my intermediate points to natural. <clears throat> and straight away that starts to smooth out our spline. Now something else we could do is change our intermediate points to something like subdivided. And then we'll come back up to our matrix and as I increase this count, increasing the count of matrices within this scene, and it's allowing us to get closer to what our initial spline was where we started. 
and I'm going to go back down to something like 200. I don't mind dumbing down the spline just a little bit because we can still make out what we're trying to represent here. Great, so now that we've been able to recreate our initial spline, it's time to start looking at how we can manipulate this. So what we'll do is select our matrix, come up to MoGraph, and we can affect this with the effectors. The first one we're gonna look at to demonstrate this is the step effector. So let's select that and add it to our scene. I'm gonna spin around our spline a little bit just so we can get a bit more perspective. I'll come over to the parameters tab. I'm gonna turn off scale because we don't want to affect the scale, but I am gonna turn on position. Now I think it might be Z, no, not Z, so we'll undo that. It must be Y and you can see, and you can see as I go into the negative on our Y axis, we've been able to instantly create depth within this spline. Each of those matrices are being pushed a little bit further than the one before. And to do something like this, manually selecting each point and moving it a little bit further in space, working along an entire spline would be such a time consuming task. And we've been able to do it instantly using the step effector and have so much control over exactly how far these get pushed. All right, so we can see this a bit better. Let's add another sweep into our scene, grab a circle, feed that into our sweep. And this time what we're gonna be doing is placing the tracer beneath that circle in our sweep nerve. Let's reduce our radius, go back to something like three, just so we can see clearly what's happening in our scene. Now with something like this, you can have a lot of fun playing around with the actual perspective of the camera, getting these to line up back in front, but having this mess and tangle of spline along the sides is a, creates, a, creates a really cool look. All right, so what do we want to do? Let's maybe reduce our step effector a little bit. And at the moment, these are just getting pushed a little bit further each time. But what, but what I really want to create is a bit more back and forth, a bit more randomness and gets nice interweaving happening. All right, so how are we gonna do that? Let's select our matrix object and we'll come back to MoGraph effectors and this time let's add a random effector. And instantly you're gonna see these start getting pushed all over the place and we get this mess and tangle and it looks really cool. Now, although this looks cool, we've now got this mess and tangle of spline, but we've, but we've lost a lot of the detail and still been able to tell exactly what's going on. So let's come over to the position in our parameters tab of the random effector and I'm just gonna zero it out on X, Y, and Z. Now, I think what we are gonna to wanna to be affecting is the Y axis. And you can see as I start to increase this random effector on that Y axis, these, these points now start pushing forward and back of each other as well. And we're, now, and we're now starting to get a bit more of that tangle look that we're going for. Now, at the moment, what this is doing is affecting each of those matrices. So we're getting a heap of randomness. So something we can even do is come into our matrix and, re and reduce the amount of points that are being generated along the spline. So let's try something like 100. And what this will do is smooth out that motion along the spline. Let's jump back into our random effector. We might even wanna increase this a little bit. All right, I think our randomness is starting to look kinda of cool. But what we might need to do is reduce our step effector a little bit so these aren't pushing as far forward of each other. Let's pull that back a bit and now we're starting to get that tighter tangle happening in the middle. You might notice up the front a little bit, we're getting a bit of pinching happening in some of these points where it gets really tight. What we might need to do is dive into our tracer and just change it back to natural. And it's gonna to start to smooth out some of those points. Now the fun thing with something like this is we haven't affected our initial spline. We've still got that, we've still got our base spline cleanly unaffected. So we can really tweak these effectors to get just the look we're after. Great, so we've got our step effector pushing these points a little bit more forward. We've got our random effector being, being able to start to tangle these up a little bit. We can jump into our random effector and just give it a little bit on X and Z as well, just to, just to get a little bit more random movement along each axis but making sure to be careful not to push these too far that we don't ruin the integrity of that initial spline. So we can still see clearly what we're trying to represent, but just add more depth to it. All right, this is starting to look cool, but at the moment, this random effector is applied globally to this entire spline. But what we have been doing is really focusing on the middle piece of how that interacts with each other. So we're gonna use this random effector purely for the center focus of our spline. So let's come over to the fall off and we're gonna give it a sphere shape in the fall off. I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit, increase its scale, and I'm just, maybe pull it back down a little bit. 
And I'm just making sure this affects just the main target and center focus of our spline. We're gonna be affecting the ends of it in just a moment. Great, so this random effector is now driving the middle of this spline. What I'll do is make a copy of this random effector and I'm gonna rename, and I'll rename this one right random. Let's pull this over to the right and maybe up a little bit. And what we're gonna to need to do is place this into, a, into the effectors tab of our matrix object. Nice, so now that we've got this random effector affecting those points. So I'm gonna pull this forward a little bit because we're just a little bit off there. And what we can do now is give greater values in X and Z because this isn't, because the end tails of a spline like this aren't the main focus. So, so the shape that these ones form aren't as important. We can get away with these being more natural, more random, because ultimately they're not integral to that main shoe that we're trying to represent in the middle. Nice, so let's copy this random effect that we've set, rename it left random, drop it into the effectors tab of our matrix object, and then and now let's pull this over. Let's select it now and we'll pull it back over so we can just affect those beginning points on the left there. Now the great thing is with these random effectors, <clears throat> I haven't been keying in specific values. You're able to just art direct and tweak these values without having without having any major consequence to your scene. So it really it really allows you to test it out and try and create some really interesting looks. Nice. So we've got our spline set up. We've got some great depth using this matrix object. And there's so many fun ways that we can now start to animate this. Even just by playing with the offset slider within the matrix object, we're getting this great animation of it flying out, unwrapping, not, not intersecting with each other. And it's just looking really cool. Now, another thing we can do to get a bit of subtle movement and animation is to change how our random effectors are actually affecting these points. So let's come over to, so let's select our middle random and I'm gonna change my random mode to noise. Now straight away, you're gonna see our spline starts to smooth out. So we're gonna to have to decrease the scale. And as I do this, that randomness starts to instantly come back into the spline. We'll also reduce our animation speed and then I'll hit play. And it might be a little bit subtle these points are now just getting a little bit of movement. <clears throat> if I push it too far, you can see exactly what's going on, but we've been able to just get a little bit of movement, a little bit of jiggle, just stop it being so static. Now, of course, we can do the exact same thing to our other random effectors. Let's change that random mode to noise, decrease our scale, and we'll just pull our animation speed down a bit just so we're getting a little bit of movement, nothing too intense. Now I'm just noticing as a couple of these points at the front, as I hit play, you can see they're passing through each other a bit, which is creating some artifacting in the geometry. So there's a couple of ways we can try and get rid of this. Let's come over to our matrix and I'll reduce our count back down to something like 100. And I'll reduce this back down to something like 100. This is gonna dumb down our spline a little bit because there's less points for our tracer to follow, but it's gonna allow our geometry to be far smoother. Now with something like this, it's, it, there's a heap of push and pull of how far you can move away from your initial spline and still be able to make out exactly what's going on. So we've been able to work with a reasonably low mat matrixy count and still have a good representation of that initial spline. All right, so I'll jump out of my camera. We'll give this a little bit of a spin around and we've, and we've got all this nice depth, got some nice interweaving at the front. And to do something like this manually, would be far more time consuming and, and it wouldn't allow the flexibility that we're seeing by using these effectors. Now, this is the same process I used for that thumbnail render you saw at the start. The only difference is I've added a few more random effectors, a couple of step effectors, just to be able to, still, still by using that spherical fall off and placing these in points where I, where I either needed a little bit more movement or wanted to create a, or wanted to really push these out to get that nice, fall off as I added depth of field into the scene. What I like about this is you're able to iterate really quickly as you work through your scene. Hopefully this workflow will allow you to work a little bit quicker when working with some complex splines and you're still getting some really great looks.
All right, guys, hope you can take something away from it. Get you thinking a little bit differently next time you're working with a really complex spline. All right, cheers, guys. I'll see you again soon.